Hey React Native friends, what's up? Simon here from Galaxies.dev, back with a new React Native Essential. Today, we will talk about authentication and how you can handle authentication with the latest version of Expo Router, which is version 5. Because there's a new way, you don't need all these redirects and the strange things. This actually got a lot easier. So here we go. I'm inside a blank new application and the first thing I want to do is I want to clean out this folder. So let's run bun run reset project. That always helps us to clean up the app folder and start from a blank template. Now I want to bring in a little fake auth provider and you can get all this code from galaxies.dev as a member. So let's uh, copy the folder in and here we go. This is pretty much just a standard implementation. Um, well, I wouldn't call it standard. That's actually probably a, a dummy implementation. So we can run Bunix expo install react native async storage. This was the only requirement for this auth provider. And this one will simply have an authenticated state that we can switch on. So basically when the user signs in, we're going to set something to storage and we set our authenticate to true sign out just does the opposite. So these are like the essential functionalities and we then provide to our provider here and here. Additionally, we also have is authenticated and is authenticated will be set in both of those functions as well as here in the use effect. So usually you will see this in the real world as well. You're going to load your JWT from storage. You might have some secure storage, which would probably be better for your store a token. But here we check for the token and set the state. So pretty much this state tells us if the user is authenticated or not. Additionally, to make things a bit easier, um, let me bring in, oh, let's let's code this ourselves, And let's also, oops, that was the wrong key. Uh, let's bring up the reload. So Bunix Expo and pressing I should give us the iOS simulator. Now imagine you also had like a register page next to this. No problem. Uh, we can just do it in our layout here as well. So let's do stack closed. Now I want to say stack dot screen name index options header shown false. That's the usual one. And for the other page, we don't really need an entry. We can just keep it like this is. Uh, so here's my application on the iOS simulator. It doesn't matter if it's iOS or Android. Now, if you have an authentication setup, what you want to do is you usually want to wrap your inside area with a folder like this. Let's just call this one tabs. And then you might have two tabs. Let's do one index.tsx. And then let's just copy this one and call the other one profile. And on that page, I will say profile. Okay. Now we can just put a new underscore layout.tsx into our tab bar folder. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call this, if you call this layout or uh, page. And then we would use the Expo Router tabs layout. Okay, so far so good. Right now we're only able to access our index page. Let's change that on the index page. We might want to have a button that brings us to the register page. So we can use the link component here to make a link to register. I will simply use as child and then put in the button from react native uh can we do this i wonder uh if we do title uh register yeah that brings us to the registration page so no problem accessing these outside pages pretty standard way of doing things now what we also want to do is we of course want to sign in the user so let's bring in the sign in function now from our use auth hook that's from the provider we just had so let's edit at the import and then we can have another button here. Well, let's call this button sign in and on press this button should simply call my sign in functionality. Uh, here we go. We got a problem because we don't have our provider wrapped around the app. So in the root layout, we now have to be a bit careful. I want to change this slightly. So I want to do instead, because we need the provider wrapped around our app, I want to do something like an initial layout. I usually follow this pattern and it's also what you're going to see in most courses on galaxies because then we can have our initial layout, which defines like stack models or anything like that. And in the root layout, we can simply return um, the auth provider and any other provider that we might have. 
and then wrap this around our initial layout. So now I should have able to the sign in functionality and this signs me actually in. In a real world scenario, you would of course make an HTTP request. Um, you would get back a token from the API. You could save this, but essentially he's storing something to, st to like the async storage and then you switch a state on. And this is what we're mimicking here. Now, the great thing comes now. With Expo Router version 5, there's something called a protected group. So we can now in here use our state. So let's just bring in the is authenticated state. And you could do the same, like if you're using Superbase, Firebase, you will always have some sort of authentication state. Cleric, it doesn't matter. They all have like is authenticated or something. And we can now say that for stack.protected, we want to have a group. We want to have a group of, let's say, my tabs. So all of them are here. This is like your inside area. So you might want to call this inside authenticated. Uh, in my case, because it's just an example, I would call it tabs. Uh, but probably I would have like an inside area because I want to have a stacked model and a different kind of other navigations in there. Now, this is not completed. The most important piece is to set the guard function here. So the guard function here says, you can access these pages if this here is true. So in our case, we can say you can access the tabs if the user is authenticated. I hope that makes sense. On the other hand, what you can also do is you can say the pretty much opposite. If the user is uh, authenticated, um, I want to see only the inside area. So that means I can negate this and wrap the rest of my screens in this block. So what would this mean? This means if the user is not authenticated, we are allowed to see this entry in our app. If the user is authenticated, the user can only see this and not this. This means you can get rid of all these redirect checks. If we have a user, if we don't have a user, if we're loading and simply follow the stack.protected mechanism. And you see right here, we're already seeing our index and profile page. And if I reload, we'll be there again because this is actually not allowed. And this actually follows uh, like a, a linear approach. So it will check, Expo Router will check first these and then the other routes. So what you could do now in the profile page, uh, let's just add a button here. So we're gonna do button from React Native title, sign out, and then on press, we wanna use the function from, uh, what's it called? It's probably called on sign out or sign out from our use of hook. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so on press, we're gonna call my sign out here. Okay, uh, yeah, we need to close this. So again, reloading here, and now putting sign out, and we're back on login. And notice how both, whether you're using sign in or sign out, there is no router. There's no declarative use of uh, the Expo router, which is pretty cool. Usually you always had this somewhere and you got problems because the app was not ready and you navigated the user before. So this approach makes the whole stuff a lot easier. And this is actually also a big part of the new course on galaxies.dev. So if you're checking this out, we have a big part here on using authentication flows, as well as a new part on server functions, API routes, and all that fun. So if you want to get more into this, check out the course on galaxies. This is different from our mission. If you're getting started, then of course, the zero to hero mission is the best place, but we also have a variety of courses and you can currently get started using the code essential or essentials. Check out the comment below this video to get a nice discount on all of this. Now, a quick final word on protected routes. What you can do with protected routes as well is, of course, you can also nest this. So in our case, what you could do is um, you can have an additional check for if someone is an admin, if it's not only signed in, but if the user is an admin. And what you can do with that information, so let's say const is admin equals false. We're gonna just do this in a fake, quick fakey way because, oh no, what is this? Is this C sharp or something? Um, what I wanna show you is that you could have your tab bar definition. So you know, you can have tab screen, name, index, and then yada yada, the rest of it. 
uh, and you can also do the same for profile. You can change the icons, check out the other videos and how you customize this. But you could now also in your tab bar have a protected group with a guard function that says users can only see this if they are an admin. So now I could just add another page. Let's call this one admin. And this is the admin page. Let's save. And then we go back to the layout and I want to put my admin page in here and see what happens. There's no admin page in here, but if I would switch this on and again, that would probably come from your backend, from your auth provider. If the user is an admin, that was, isn't in the route. Um, it is rendered here. So you would probably want to, if you like want to have it in the center, you would rep, uh, put it like this because Expo Router again goes through all these routes in a linear way. So by doing this, you could have a special functionality, which is only available to some sort of users. Maybe it's only for paying users. Maybe it's only for admins. Um, and with the protected groups, you can also now protect the modals in your application. So if I had a group of modals up here, I could simply put them uh, under a stack protected block as well. And users couldn't access them unless they are um, authenticated. Now, uh, final word, is there anything else? Yeah, you shouldn't uh, have multiple protected screens. That's simply not working. So don't put one page in there and one page out of it. That's just not working. But you can also nest them if you want to. So in our case, it is kind of nested, but you can also directly nest it like in this uh, example. Falling back to a specific screen um, is pretty easy. You just need to have one route which is not protected. So if this block here fails, Expo Router will automatically display the next available route that is not protected. And also, just like we've seen before, the same stuff works for tabs and draw, which is pretty cool. And as well, you can use this for custom navigator. So we've seen this before in some examples with like material top uh, navigation where you use this with layout context hook. So that is a pretty cool thing that it's implemented on day one. Final note on all of this. If you're using uh, the new stack protected group tabs draw protected, be sure that your backend is also protected because real security always happens on the backend side. This is cool. This is like hiding pages, making sure general users don't get to pages they shouldn't see. But overall, I would never trust this 100% and you should make sure that your API, your route, your endpoints are protected and using the token authentication. Please treat it that way. Use this more like, I don't want to display this to the user and make it sort of protected, but this is not the only protection you should have in place. So please keep this in mind. If you want to dive deeper into this, check out galaxies.dev and our new Expo Router version 5 cores. Use code essential or essentials. I should really take a note of this. But anyway, stay subscribed. Let me know what other essentials you would like to see and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.